The final 10 megahertz B scan positions are axial scans. I leave them for the last because of two reasons. Number one, all the other exams, we avoid the lens as much as possible. The crystalline lens and definitely an interocular lens in an eye will act like a lens to the sound beam and cause a lot of aberrations in the image. So we normally avoid the lens. But there are times when it's nice to do an axial scan so that we can document the pos po posterior lens capsule in relationship to the optic nerve and if there's another pathology in that view. So let's start with a horizontal axial, the most useful, because when I go horizontally, nasal, temporal, I will at least have the macula in this view. Although I would never make a decision or clinical decision about the macula or the retina from an axial view because when the lens is vi visible in our B scan, I don't trust the echoes from the retina completely. Look straight up to the ceiling for me, a little bit lower. There we go. So I put a big blob of gel. And now when I get the optic nerve, there we go. And I'm going to freeze that for a moment just to show you that you have some aberrations here from scanning through the crystalline lens. Lots of artifact, that's not something in her vitreous. We actually can see anterior and posterior cornea and optic nerve. So if the marker was nasal, this is a nasal temporal scan, that means the macula is just inferior to the optic nerve on the screen. And you can see the reason why I can't make a clinical decision. Now the vertical axial scan some people like to do, but I find it less clinically useful and I wouldn't take the time to do that unless you had a pathology that were there. However, what I can do is just to show you how it'll look exactly the same and why labeling the picture, why labeling the image is very important because no matter what you see on the screen, you are the only one, the one who's holding the probe, the only one who knows where that image came, from where that image came. Marker superiorly, <clears throat> Lower the gain a little bit. That's a little bit cleaner now. There's the optic nerve. And there's the double peak of the cornea. Anterior cornea, posterior cornea, posterior lens capsule optic nerve. So that are the, those are the components of a classic axial scan. You may need to do an oblique scan if the patient had an inferotemporal melanoma, for example then I would do an oblique scan so that I would have both the tumor and the lens and the optic nerve all in my same view. <clears throat> and on the horizontal scan that we just did, that could also be used to take a measurement of the axial length when I have enough distance and I can clearly see the anterior cornea. I'm confident about double checking the measurement of a staphyloma eye. 